Uh, today, I wanted to talk about uh, the idea of being a good steward of the gifts uh, that God has blessed us with, particularly our financial gifts. And uh, it's an idea that uh, often uh, makes people feel very uncomfortable, myself included, even talking about it. But uh, I hope that in this passage of Scripture, you will uh, allow the Lord to speak to you as uh, God continues to help all of us become cheerful in our giving and generous folks. I invite you to stand this morning for the reading of the epistle lesson that uh, comes from the uh, book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 5 through 8. You can either look in your own Bibles or you can refer to the overhead. We hear these words. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead of you and arrange in advance for this bountiful gift that you have promised so that it may be ready as a voluntary gift and not as an extortion. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up in your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. These are the words of the Holy Scriptures given to you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Lord, again, we uh, thank you this morning for the privilege of being here in this uh, place of worship. Thank you for the week that we've had and for um, all the opportunities that you give us to uh, grow in grace and knowledge of you. And I pray this morning that uh, you would help me to get out of your way in order that we will see and hear only you. We pray that you would speak to the point of our greatest need this morning and uh, continue to uh, help us to grow and mature in our faith journey. I pray this morning that uh, as you speak to our hearts that we will be liberated from the things that bind us. And help us to become the persons that you've created us to be. And we pray this in all of our prayers in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Well, if you um, if you ask my wife, you she would um, she would really uh, let you know that I am uh, speaking the truth to you this morning. Because in all of my years of ministry, the uh, thing that stresses me out the most is uh, the stewardship, stewardship sermon on, on the giving of your gifts. And over the years, that is the thing that has um, really um, irritated the most people uh, in the church. And I think the reason is because this whole series we've been trying to 
get everyone to uh, be reminded that stewardship is not about money, but it is about being a good manager of all of the resources that God has given us. Our money, our time, our effort, so on and so forth. I uh, heard a, uh, a joke, but it wasn't too far from being the truth of a preacher one time was baptizing an adult guy and he uh, was on the creek bank and before he took the guy into the water, the guy said, well, hold on just a minute. He said, let me uh, take my, uh, my billfold out and he laid it on the side of the bank, he said, because that's one thing I'm not ready yet for the Lord to transform. I'm not ready to hand over that to God. And that is a sad commentary on the Church of Jesus Christ because the point of uh, this stewardship campaign uh, that we've been doing uh, for three Sundays now is not about money or time or prayers or your church attendance, but it's about our willingness to give God everything to give God ourselves because that's what God really wants he wants our heart and I hope this morning as you uh, hear these words that you will receive them um, with the grace and love that they are offered by God to us as God tries to move us into uh, being uh, persons who are cheerful givers. When the Apostle Paul writes, the, pens the letter, the second letter to the church at Corinth, his, um, his intention is that he wants all of the church to know that God is calling them to be a cheerful giver, generous giver. In fact, if you read back in chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians, uh, Paul talks to the church of Corinth about their sister church in Macedonia. And the reason that Paul brings up this church of Macedonia is that Paul tells the Corinthian Christians that he has already talked to the church in Macedonia about the intentions of the church at Corinth. He believes deep within his heart that the Corinthians are a generous people. And the offering that they are about to take, not only in Corinth, but throughout the, uh, throughout the region around Greece, Paul believes that the people who are Christians are going to give generously to this offering to be a part of the ministry to which God has called them. One of the things that I forgot to mention to the, to the early service is this, the thing that makes this, this generosity even uh, more impressive is that uh, the church in Corinth and Macedonia are largely comprised of Gentile Christians. They are the very people that the Jews were excluding and they were thinking that they were of secondary importance compared to those who were uh, Jewish in their faith. And now we find that the church of Macedonia and the church at Corinth, um, made up of Gentile Christians, they, are, uh, they have a great heart to give to the people that were once their enemies, people that they felt were lesser than they are. We as human beings sometimes only want to be generous to those that we like or those that uh, 
we have similar characteristics to. But this passage from 2 Corinthians reminds us that the church of Jesus Christ is comprised of all people around the world. And it calls us to be generous, even to those persons that we don't necessarily agree with or like very well. In fact, Paul goes on to say that this church at Macedonia has been inspired by the willingness of the Corinthian church to give of their means. He says it in this way, that even though they have uh, gone through a, a troubling and trial, a period of trial in their lives, that they have taken this trial of poverty that they've been experiencing and yet they've added the joy that they have in their heart. And the joy mixed with even their afflictions has produced an overwhelming amount of, of generosity in their hearts toward people. He goes on to say the reason that the Macedonian church is able to do this is because it is an outpouring of the grace of God. Otherwise, they would not have been able to do this. But he goes on to say that they gave uh, an offering because they believe it deep within their heart. They are cheerful givers. One of the things that uh, should speak to us this morning the apostle says about the church of Macedonia, he said this about them. He says, all of them have given uh, as they have means, but some of them have given even more than their means to the work of the ministry. And he adds this. He said, not only have they given, but he said they have eagerly inquired of us how they can be active in the ministry. What can they do? What can they give? It's all out of a heart of generosity and cheer. We sometimes uh, forget that uh, what God wants from us is not our physical possessions or are our resources, but what God wants to do is for us to allow God to help us to be good stewards of those things that God has placed within our trust, a matter of stewardship. When you and I enter into that place in our spiritual lives where we acknowledge that everything that we have is God's, and that God has only loaned it out to us on our time here on earth to be good stewards of it, our, our mentality changes when we think that God's ultimate goal is not about money or time or prayers or our presence, but God's ultimate goal is to have our heart. to be a cheerful giver, to be generous in all that we do. It's interesting, during this uh, ninth chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul uh, gives us three admonitions about giving. One, he says that what they give, they must have already made up their mind before the offering. The reason that Paul wants them to take up this offering, as he says, before he gets there, is not only as he describes that he does not want everyone to be embarrassed if they come and they're not as generous as he thought they were. But Paul says the reason that he wants them to give before he gets there, and he's sending the brothers ahead to make the collection. He said, because... Paul does not want this to be done by their coercion or their extortion. He wants them to give because God has made them a generous and cheerful giver in their heart. 
not because they need to put the money in the plate. And secondly, Paul says in the letter, he says, I want them to give not begrudgedly, but from the heart. I know in my own life, I uh, was raised in a, uh, a preacher's family, so I'm the traditional PK, preacher's kid. And even though we went to church every Sunday and we were very active and were there every time the doors were open, we weren't taught to tithe uh, as a part of our uh, spiritual growth. Part of that was due to the fact that we grew up in, as I've told you before, in a an extremely poverty-stricken family. We weren't as poor as some people. We, we didn't ever have to worry about having food on the table because my mother canned in the summer. We didn't have to worry about having a roof over our head even though they struggled sometimes to pay the mortgage. And we never had to worry about clothing on our backs because our mother would make our clothes out of scraps that she got from the uh, quilting uh, organizations. But we were never taught uh, to tithe, even though we believed uh, in the principle. And I remember when I, I started going into uh, to become an ordained you know, Methodist minister, uh, God really laid that on my heart, that there was something that was missing in my walk with Christ. And God laid it up on my heart that that's what I should do. It may not be something that you feel led to do, but it was something that I felt compelled to do to grow in my faith. And so I began in my college days, even though I wasn't making much money, I, I began to tie the tenth of my income to the church. And I would like to say to you this morning that 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 was something that was done out of the generosity of my heart, but initially it, it was only a ritual. It meant nothing, really. I did what I thought God was calling me to do, and I gave the money, but I did not give it with a generous and cheerful heart. Everything changed in my life the day that God taught me to, to give from my heart, to give, to be a generous and cheerful giver. And now I never, I never feel uh, like it's a burden to me to give to the Lord's church. I only feel a burden because I do, I'm unable to give more. And thirdly, Paul says... Give, being reminded that God loves a cheerful giver. I know some of you who, who um, are uh, wanting to nitpick this morning, you're probably thinking, well, God doesn't just love a cheerful giver because God loves everyone, regardless of whether they're a cheerful giver or not, and you would be correct. But the mentality that Paul was speaking of was that God is really blessed and overjoyed when you and I become cheerful givers. Because it's interesting that when we only respond to things uh, that uh, we send out, uh, each of us in the church will receive one of these um, handouts about our stewardship campaign, and it tells about all the expenses of the church. And, um, you know, I might someone might be compelled when they find out exactly how much money the church is spending on, on uh, keeping the lights and the electricity on. Somebody might be compelled to, because there are youth or children uh, ministries. Somebody might be even compelled to know how much money that we spend on our cleaning services, which in and of themselves are a ministry to people who are hurting. Some of us could respond to that or to the idea of what the giving patterns are in the church. Some people may even respond to the guilt, or as uh, Paul called it, the uh, extortion technique, where we make everyone feel guilty that you're supposed to be giving this, and you're only giving that. 
But the thing that I want to say to you this morning is that there is no condemnation uh, coming forward to you this morning. But I want you to know that as far as our stewardship of giving, uh, the thing that God is wanting to uh, touch on is to be reminded that God wants our heart. Because it is when God makes us a cheerful giver, we not only give to the Lord's church, to give to people who are in need, but we, we become generous in all our dealings with one another. And I, I do believe that is the end goal of God, is to help us to be so transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit through the grace and love of God that God helps us to become cheerful givers in our heart, generous and glad hearts. I ask for forgiveness all the time for the, for the years that I spent seeing it as a legalism, the times when I perhaps even gave more uh, dollars to the church than I do now but they were not given with the right mentality. And I pray every morning as I do my devotions that God would come and transform me into a person that possesses a heart of gratitude, a heart of cheer, and a heart of generosity. And I invite you this morning to join me in that quest we too can be transformed like the Macedonian church to a church that not only gives of their means, but they give above and beyond their means and they are eager to participate in the work of the kingdom. Not because someone asked them to do it, not because there's a great need, but because they have allowed God to help them to have a generous and cheerful heart. I remember one of the church members I had at past churches uh, when I gave a sermon similar to this. He came up to me, and he was kind of a difficult guy to get along with. And um, he said to me, I don't agree with what you just said. And I said, which part are you talking about? He said, I give when I see the need. And I said to him, uh, I said, Mr. Such and Such, I said, don't you think that that's kind of like the, the tail wagging the dog? You're giving out of the church's need to receive rather than allowing God to help you to become a cheerful and generous giver overall and help it become a part of who you are. For those of you who are struggling in this um, area, um, I know that there are times in your life, as there have been in mine, when you weren't able to do uh, like you would like to. But don't feel any, any uh, condemnation coming forth this morning. I just ask you to pray for, for the stamina and the willingness that God will give you to become generous and cheerful in your dealings with God, uh, God's church, and with your fellow human beings in the world. After all, God delights in all of us when we have a generous and cheerful heart. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.